Welcome back, everybody. Cat's going to go Abra Kadabra. And the cat is now gone. She was not happy. I woke her from a nap. I apologize, but she has to begin every video. So, welcome back, everybody. It is Tuesday. It's October the 11th, 2022. And yes, this is number five in our guitar uh, parade of the month of September and October. Again, these guitars just were on sale. I wouldn't buy them just because they're on sale. They were guitars that I was interested in, but I wasn't interested in paying the full price for it. But when they went on sale, it was like, why not? So this, according to the serial number, is made in January of 2022. It's a Squire Paranormal uh, paranormal, excuse me, I just woke up too. A Squire Paranormal Cabronita Telecaster Thin Line. That's a mouthful in Lake Placid Blue. So let's not waste any time, let's just dive in. You can see the box has a little bit of a crash and burn here, but I don't think that's anything to worry about. If UPS didn't leave their trademark, or FedEx in this case, you'd never know it was shipped to you. So I think they do that on purpose. Again, as with the other guitars that I've been getting, well, this one never even had staples. So I can't say the staples were popped on this because there are no staples. So we'll just immediately free the guitar. It has its usual Squire little neck gizmo. And we'll just pull it right out. A quick unveiling. Free it from its little hip pads. And see what we got. It's got its Typical accoutrements, it's truss rod, bridge adjustment, it's Buck Rogers headgear, so it can travel through space and go through the asteroid belt without any radiation damage. Unfortunately, I'm Cutting through the shroud, but given we expect no damage on this guitar, the shroud doesn't have to be perfect for returns, otherwise, they would tag you on the restocking for not returning it in perfect condition. So, behold, there it is. Red ends feel nice. Action seems painfully high. It may need a uh, truss rod adjustment. The preliminary letting my hands do the walking. Feels like there's no damage at all. You see, action does seem incredibly high on this one. But so yeah, that's the preliminary. We're going to do what we like to do. We're going to go plug it in and we're going to play it. But it looks lovely. And again, red ends feel really good. The wood graining on the neck looks pleasant. A little bit of flame, nothing too dramatic. So we will be back in a few hours and give our impressions. Welcome back everybody. It is October the 13th, 2022. It's a Thursday evening. It's another beautiful early autumn day and we're back to give some more thoughts about this guitar. This is the Squire Paranormal. I don't know why I can't say that word. Let's do it again. The Squire Paranormal Cabronita. 
see if I got that right, in Lake Placid Blue. Um, I've had this guitar for two days now. Usually I come back within the same day and give initial reactions to it, but I've been enjoying playing this guitar so much that I let a couple days go by. And here's what I think about this guitar. I think it's a fantastic guitar. I think when they introduced this to the market, I believe in 2000, it was $350. Then they pushed it up to 400 Then they optimistically tried to take it up to 449 most dealers have brought it back down to the 399 mark. I think they should have kept it at 350. I don't think it's, you know, fully in the league of the classic vibe price. Um, not because it's not as good of a guitar, um, but hardware is. You can tell there's a bit of a difference in the hardware. It's a, sort of a half step down. That being said, it does not affect the playability. I did have to lower the action on this guitar, which is something I usually do instantly with Epiphones, but with Squires, usually they have the, the action where I like it, but it seemed excessively high, so a couple twists of the little hex wrench across the board, dropped it down, and it plays great. Um, the fit and the finish on this guitar are really, really good. The weak spots, if I were to say the weak spots, the tuners are a little problematic. And the input jack, or output jack, I guess it's out, the signal's leaving the guitar, feels really flimsy and cheap. Um, so again, they probably should have spent 20 cents more and put a better one in there. Telecasters deserve a better jack. The switch feels good, the pots feel good. Um, from the people who've taken the control plate off in the back, they've mentioned that these are the tiniest pots. They work good. You know, there's no sudden drop-off. The tone knob does what it's supposed to do. But the secret sauce for me on this guitar are the pickups. The pseudo Jazzmaster looking pickups that most people in the last two years have come to conclude are more of a P90. Tone-wise, I would agree. I would say there's nothing Jazzmaster about these pickups at all. They have a crunch and a tone that are much more in line with a P90. I'm not a pickup expert. I have no idea. I just go by what it sounds like. That's what it sounds like to me. And along with the semi-hollow body design of the guitar, it just has a very unique tone. And the neck profile, while thin to some people, fits my hand just fine. I have an aversion to poly fingerboards. And yet, like all things, once I start playing it and I get accustomed to it, I'm, wow, this is really nice. Feels good. The fret work on this guitar, as far as I can tell, is flawless. The fret ends are a little bit rougher than the classic vibe, but I'm talking, if I were to do the nylon test on it, I don't think it would snag at all. There's certainly no rough edges. It just feels like they could have spent a little more time, but, you know, time is money, and these are budget guitars, relatively speaking. Um, so, yeah, and I noticed no high frets. The frets were polished nice. There was no scratchiness when you do bends. So it really, really impressed me in that department. So much so that I'm actually considering buying another one and just putting it away because this probably, I'm guessing, will be a limited edition guitar. And I like it so much that I thought, hmm, and especially, and I put this in as the kicker, and this is probably... Not going to last very long, limited time offer, but Pro Audio Star of Brooklyn, New York is selling these. They actually had them at 199 briefly during their big sale, and then they popped them up to 229 At 229 it's a steal. I mean, we're talking, you know, bullet slash affinity territory price-wise, and this is definitely a couple notches above that, plus they don't offer anything like this at all. And, of course, the classic Vibe Thin line, um, which is a Telecaster setup with the two single-coil pickups, is in the 400 to $450 range. I've never played one, so I don't know quality-wise if it's, you know, that much better. But, I mean, yeah, for 229 this is a steal. If it's something that you've thought about getting, I would definitely suggest you go online and punch in Pro Audio Star and go to there. They sell them as used. And again, I'm guessing just because there's a glut of guitars, this one again came as brand new as anything I can see. Now, I've noticed that on the three Made in China guitars, no hang tags. So I don't know if they snagged those. 
the three classic vibes that I bought um, had hang tags with an uh, inspection date on it. This has nothing. But you've got the serial number. And as someone pointed out to me, and I think it's pretty accurate based on what I've seen, they add a letter at the end of the serial number, A through A through L, corresponding to the month that it was built. So if you get a guitar that the last letter before the number begins is an A, that's a guitar that was built in January. And at the other end, if you get an L, that was built in December. So that's something new that they've added in the last year or two. I never really noticed until someone mentioned it on the forum, but it's sort of nice to know what month your guitar came to life. don't know how accurate it is. I have a classic vibe that shows the build date as being January, but it wasn't inspected until February, so you know how things go. Anyways, these are things only guitar nerds care about. I am a confessed guitar nerd, so I care about such things most people probably do not. So, that being said, this is a rather quick video. I really, really like this guitar. Um, some people say this guitar is in the five pound range. I weighed mine at about six and a half pounds. It does not feel ridiculously light. It doesn't feel like it's a toy. It does not feel neck heavy, but it's very comfortable. I've probably mentioned it more than once. I have a, well, I got a classic vibe custom Telecaster with the double binding and it came in at eight pounds. That's not too heavy for me, but that's a pretty chunky guitar, but that's about normal for a Telecaster. But I have a Squire Bullet Telecaster that's eight pounds. So I don't know what they made it with, and it has a more slender body. So who knows? But this guitar is very comfortable. Highly recommend it. If you're looking for a Telecaster sound, you probably wouldn't go here because it doesn't have the classic Telecaster pickup setups. But it's a very bright, shiny guitar. The pickups handle drive really well. I've seen on a couple of videos, these are, I wouldn't say low output pickups, but they're certainly not, you know, super high. I think they were coming in in the 6 and the 7 range. And I did not have to adjust my pickups. Another member on the forum said that his were set much lower in the body, and he was not satisfied with the tone, so he lifted them up so that the little tab, which is unique to the Jazzmaster pickup, was flush with the body which these seem to be from the factory. So I got the tone right out of the box. Um, the issue I have with the tuners is they're incredibly tight, but I've noticed all five of the guitars I've received thus far that have these vintage style tuners, they all seem tight. Now I don't know if they loosen up with time. Um, you know, the guitars hold their tune actually quite well, so I don't spend a lot of time tuning it. They're not very accurate in the sense that you start tuning up and you get it right to where you want it and then it goes a little above and then you have to back it off and so they're not, you know, but again, they're just imitation, I'm guessing, Klusen style uh, tuners, uh, a higher grade, but then you start adding money to it and I don't know if you want to do it. Bottom line is it takes a little longer to tune it, but once you get it in tune, it seems to stay in tune fine. Some other people commented too that it's sort of a nice upgrade that the uh, tone and the volume knob are actually made out of metal, probably some cheap pop metal, but they have the little pilot screw, um, so you have to use the hex wrench to actually remove those, and they felt that that just gave it a more professional feel. The switch feels fine to me. I mean, it's not a wobbly, crummy switch. Um, you know, I've only had the guitar for two days. I expect at some point that the output jack is going to fail because, again, it just does not feel robust. Uh, the classic vibes, both the strats and the telly, much more robust feeling when you plug the cord in. It's just sort of, it goes in, it holds, it stays, but you don't get any sense that there's going to be much longevity there. They also say that this pit guard is parchment. Which is interesting because if you look at the, the camera doesn't show up very well, but the pickup covers are cream and maybe the parchment looks white in comparison to that. Maybe if I put something white next to the parchment pick guard, it would look more parchment. Who knows? Again, small details, only nerds care. So there you go. And this was built in uh, January of 2022, so it's this year's model. 
And again, I hear rumblings that these are going to be discontinued. Fender, in their infinite wisdom, they don't have this on their website currently. So I sent them an email and asked, was this just discontinued? And the guy answered, no, no. We're, they're still in production. And I didn't bother to insult him by writing back and saying, well, why don't you have them on your website? And it seems to me if they're in production and you're selling them, you'd want to advertise that you have them. But that's corporate mentality for you. And I didn't want to get in a dust up with a guy. He was nice enough to answer my question within 24 hours, which is not always the case because the good people at Fender are busy answering lots of people's questions. So he got right back to me. He answered my question, and I just let it lay where it was. So anyways, if you're interested in this guitar, again, I am i don't work for Pro Audio Star. This is not a paid endorsement. But I just believe it's important to pass along. And when you can get something for essentially, you know, I think they're showing it at 47% less. But that's against their full price of 449 So I don't know what the percentage is off of 399 But hey, 229 is better than 399 And like I said, they're calling them used guitars. But every person on the forum that's been buying these things has been getting literally brand new guitars. Um, you do give up the factory warranty, but you know what's that worth to you? If you don't live next to a warranty center, you're going to have to pack it up and ship it and pay for the shipping back. And for a guitar at this cost, you'd be better off figuring out how to fix it yourself or taking it to a lo local tech and see if they can sort it out for you. You know, unless you have a twisted neck or something that's profoundly, you know, going to affect the guitar. So there you go. So once again, I do the date just because I like to give the date. It is October the 13th, 2022. As always, I appreciate anybody and everybody that stops by. There's certainly no shortage of these videos on the Internet. Um, as I've explained before, I basically started doing this just to protect myself after getting a couple of guitars. Uh, they were Epiphones that had cracked necks, and I had no proof that it came out of the box that way, and there was some question about, you know, so I thought, well, the best way to do it is just to just film me unboxing it and give you my experience, and then it just sort of grew from there. And since I do have opinions, I pass them on. I would not suggest anyone ever take my opinion for anything more than what it is. It's an opinion. Everyone has one, and so what? Anyways, another day on planet Earth. The moon is bright in the autumn sky. By the time this video gets posted, the moon will be less bright because it's in its waning mode. It's getting smaller with each day. But here's to a good autumn for everybody, and thank you again. Welcome back. It is now Friday morning, 9 o'clock in the morning, October the 14th, 2022. There was one more comment I wanted to add to this video about this guitar that I neglected, and that's the color. Lake Placid Blue is such an interesting color. Um, I wouldn't say it's my favorite color, but I really like it a lot. It's a color that, in my opinion, works really well on Fender guitars, because back in the day, Fender offered custom colors, so people just started ordering all kinds of crazy stuff. And since they were made in California, that California craziness sort of happened. I would not want a Les Paul or an ES-335 or, you know, a more traditional style guitar in this color. But for Telecasters and Stratocasters and Jazzmasters and Jaguars and, yeah, Mustangs, Duo Sonics, it's a great color. But what makes it interesting to me is that it's a very shifting color. So depending on how much light you have on it or where the light is hitting it, it can be a really light color. It can be a very dark color. This is my second true Lake Placid Blue guitar. I had a Duo Sonic as well. I did have a Squire Bullet Telecaster that they said was Lake Placid Blue, but I say no. I say it was Ice Blue. It was much lighter than this. So they were really playing fast and loose with their descriptions, which they often do. But anyways, I just wanted to add that this guitar is stunning in Lake Placid Blue. It also came in, I think, Fiesta Red. It came in a cream color, and it's 
Currently, those two are, have since been discontinued, and this and a sunburst model with the gold anodized pit guard. And of the three, or the, of the four, I think this color really works the best. So anyways, that's the end of the video. I just wanted to add that. I was playing it this morning, and I thought, gee, I, I neglected to mention my feelings about the color. And again, this guitar just plays fantastic. So thanks again. Off I go.